we are what we are speaking about uh, today the relationship between food and the city strategies for urban resilience and and we know that in recent year you know, the rapid growth of, of cities is placing enormous demands on urban food supply system and this is a big concern is a big challenge but on the other hand is also uh, how to say bless in disguise could be a real interesting strategy for our future uh, an emphasis of uh, sustainability as so to say encouraged the diffusion of the formula for instance of urban and pre-urban farming and or precision agriculture or also activist movement related to self-producing food in the city but also summarize let's say a series of number of social spatial trends and affects also the regional planning perspective so my contribution in a way wants to trace a sort of methodological framework um, to combine the advantages of a direct analysis and research by design approach so what you are going to see will be also a lot of uh, um, examples connected to design practices to rethink productive landscape from one side and also integrating element of uh, let's say small scale uh, design experience but first of all um, I'm, I'm going uh, to, uh, to start my first block of this presentation, uh, giving a background of what about urban resilience. Um, so to say in, in 1973, the Canadian ecologist uh, uh, named Crawford Holling introduced uh, the term ecological resilience uh, to describe, let's say, the idea of dynamic of ecosystem and emphasizing the condition far from any persistent state uh, but related to change unpredictability and alternative form of of stability um, this is, is is a very important let's say uh, background uh, to understand that we are in this uh, condition of dynamicity and unpredictability of, of changes considering a long temporal spawn. Uh, and we know, on the other hand, uh, that we are living uh, more and more in a world which is characterized by urbanization. So, as Carolyn Steele in 2009 posed this important question, how do you feed a city? Uh, this is probably one of the greatest questions of our time but it's, uh, so to say, a topic which not everybody is, uh, everybody is completely aware. Uh, when you think about it every day uh, for a city the size of, of London, for instance, or Paris or Berlin or Hanover, where I live at the moment, 30 million meals are produced, transported, um, both unsold, cooked, uh, even disposed. Uh, indeed, it's, 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 it's a remarkable amount of, of, um, of data and quantity of food uh, that every day the cities need to uh, take in and take out. And this poses also, let's say, big questions about our development models. So while modern agro-industries, in a way, are maximizing the production um, with little regards to the impacts on the environment, the correlation between agriculture and urbanization process um, has been more and more drawn apart from people perception. But never before these two disciplines have been so related. Uh, the reason in a way are simple as they are significant because agriculture and urban development use the same sources resources which are increasingly rare so water land energy and labor forces um, and we live in in, in place like this uh, as if they are the most natural thing in the world forgetting that our daily consume habits widely affects uh, the market level of demands uh, our level of production and we are actually as dependent on natural world as our ancestor were. Uh, 
So if we are going to ask what is our food heritage, um, we can think about that the relationship between food and the city has been crucial since the foundation, since the foundation of our society. Um, food has been always a material for the sustainable renewable of, of cities. In the cycle of fresco, as you can see in, in this slide, um, made by Ambrogio Lorenzetti in, in Siena, the abundance of food is depicted as a one allegory of the good, good government, uh, effect of a proster, prosperous and, and rich city. And in a way, you can see also for this a kind of a symmetry, perfect symmetry on this slide. From the left side, the op operos and prospero city. From the right side, the countryside. So the place on which we rely on for our food production. But after more than, so to say, two centuries of industrial development, urbanist studies strictly related on it, our society led agriculture to a sort of marginal role, or at least in a perception of uh, marginal role. This model has uh, dramatically transformed the domestic economies, providing a higher level of food security, of course, on, on one hand, but on the other, leading to a progressively relocation of food taste at expenses of our diffuse urban metabolic imbalances. Um, and as you can see here, there is a sort of trajectories in conceptualizing urban metabolism from the first scheme of Johann Henrik von Thunen in 1826 for the first rural ring. And, and then the first idea of, of um, stock and flows diagrams related to urban metabolism in, in Bruxelles in 1977. But one striking idea uh, connected to this was coined in 1929 by Hedden, that was at the time the head of the Port Authority of, of New, York, uh, New York City, with the term uh, regional food shed. Uh, if urbanization trends, in a way, have reached a sort of geo-urban dimension, as you can see here in this uh, research that have been conducted by Columbia University in 2011, studying the New York City regional food shed, uh, affect the one of other city in United States East Coast, no? showing how the level of dependencies uh, couldn't be satisfied locally without being subject to a sort of supermarket diet. So tracing uh, the complex and I would say non-transparent trajectories that food cycle needs to take in order to reach our plates is generally impossible. We take for granted, for instance, that the supply of food market will be endlessly replenished every time that we go to shopping or to dining or even we go to a supermarket, we think about, okay, we are there and we have food. Um, but one of the great irony, I would say, of contemporary society is the change of paradigm regarding to food as an urban commodity. And uh, what I would like to propose you is this transition is related to four product design uh, transformation, which have influenced the development of Western society more than any other urban design project have done in history. And probably this is the legacy of the shopping and supply system. The funny mark, the funny farmer candy market in 1920 was one of the first self-service grocery store leading towards the supermarket diffusion. In 1927, we uh, General Electric commercialized the first domestic refrigerator. In 1936, Sylvan Goodman introduced the shopping cart in his supermarket chain in Oklahoma in order to let customers to be able to move, but I would say even to buy more groceries. And in 1957, Ford Automotive produced the modern family station wagon. 
with the effect to increase the number of vehicles able to carry more groceries and more goods. So, um, while we are debating or on how to fight the climate change effect, the figures and the cost of these food revolutions are staggering. Uh, nothing is really changing in this regard, and, and we are still very hungry of fossil fuels. So consider, for instance, as I was writing in this slide, that it takes about 10 calories uh, of fossil fuel energy to produce one single calorie of modern supermarket food. And even though we are living in an overproduction system, we don't actually value it. So half of the food we produce in Europe, moreover, is thrown away. And these are um, this kind of food is absolutely edible. We are realizing, I would say, in, in, in a little bit provocative way, a real life dystopic future. Uh, could be even a sequel to Animal Farm in a way that neither uh, George Orwell could have foreseen. And this provocation that you see on the left side of the slide proposed by Envao and Dival with this 1,000 vertical livestock, livestock farms in Pig City could be a very, uh, I would say, tremendous example of, of, of this dystopias. In the same key figure evoked evoke by Richard Fleischer in Soil and Green in 1973, uh, describing, I would say, a dystopic urban future characterized by overpopulation, depletion of resources, food pollution. As more as us, we move into city, more of that natural world is being transformed in order to feed us. Um, consider that uh, 20 million hectares of rainforests are lost every year to giving space to new crops. Although we are losing the same amount of existing arable lands to salinization or erosion. At the end of this long process, we are not even managing to feed the planet properly. And this is the most sad consequences. One billion of us are obese, while a further, further billion starve. So none of this make very much sense, I would, I would say. In parallel, um, the social awareness of the environmental economic crisis is growing, and we are called to rethink our habits and lives in a more sustainable way for future generations. Considering that recently FAO estimated that more than 800 million people, that are equal to 7.5% of urban income, support themselves with urban agricultural practices. And that over the last 10 years, Cities like Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, Casablanca, Medina, Sao Paulo, Vancouver, and much more have produced within their boundaries more than 76% of poultry, 60% of pigs, and 45% of vegetables, which are consumed by every citizen. So looking at the history uh, and thinking about the future of our, our city is worthy to speculate on this topic, the relationship between food and the city, but even on the idea of what does it mean talking about urban agriculture as a social and a political thing. Uh, it's a topic that concerns food quality, of course, organoleptic qualities of, of food, I would say even territorial and social justice connected to it, but also is a topic which concerns life quality and living condition, assuming, so to say, transverse phenomena, um, such as, for instance, the marginalization of our peripheries, or, for instance, uh, the aging of uh, elderly population, but all, I would say even um, the employment crisis. Uh, in this way, urban agriculture is one emerging integrative factor um, for creating sustainable cities and even sustainable landscape. And is used many times, as you can see also in this um, 
historical pictures as a key team to enhance new potential for open space system in a design dimension that range from formal strategy and informal spaces, as I was entitling in this slide. Um, studies about food supply and production system were also led by, um, so to say, Claude Ledoux. This could be a very uh, first idea of the project of Royal Salt Works, which has defined an idea of new feudal urbanity, locating inside this complex uh, panoptic, uh, a place for agricultural production, so proximity agriculture. Uh, a model that would uh, have been reused also later by von Thunen, as we mentioned before, for his town development uh, studies. Um, food supply and production system studies has been also led by Patrick Geddes, but also in particular by Ebenezer Award with the book Garden City of Tomorrow, influencing the landscape conception in the period between the World Wars. Also Le Corbusier in 1922 for his vision about La Ville Contemporaine focused on the theme of food production in three different areas. Uh, the protected zone for extensive agriculture, uh, the four acre lands uh, of parcels for local market distribution, but also the um, proximity urban community garden also interesting for social gathering aspect between these immobile villas. A decade later, partly in response to the Great Depression, Frank Lloyd Wright, Brodacre City model, can be read as an overcome of the American suburbs logic, in which agricultural activities and decentralized service become the structural matrix of this 0.4 hectares of land of single property in a sort of low density CP model. And finally, even also Hilbesheimer abandoning his first totalizing Russian, uh, rationalist uh, idea uh, of uh, high, high rise city in favor of a more organic proposal of new regional pattern, as you can see in this slide, conceive the small and the medium sized uh, local farms as an important frame in order to control and organize metropolitan territory. Uh, so the principle of multifunctionality applied to urban landscape can become a tactic probably to react to the specific challenges and demands of contemporary city in terms of living space, services, uh, food, according to different uh, proposal, as you can see here, from Aldo Cibic that was invited to the uh, Venice Biennial 2010 with this rural urbanism proposal, or Andres Duaini with the vision of agrarian urbanism, towards even the extreme logic represented by the vertical farming idea. But in which way food can be related to design and planning discipline. This I would like to propose you some arguments of, of discussion, which is this, basically the second block of my presentation, which I entitled Applied Strategies. Strategy one, uh, the role of ecostructure. So as we said, the global city paradigm can describe the interaction of flexible structure, dense spaces, uh, articulated streams, uh, but even the idea of drawscapes uh, or intertwined landscape. New concepts like land links uh, and land grids uh, or ecostructure can become, um, let's say, a, a paradigm to understand our future food supply system. And also the uh, multi-level uh, way of organizing both our mobility infrastructure, productive infrastructure, landscape infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Uh, in order also try to uh, understand the possible, the possible risk generated by the sprawl in the, in the territory. Um, 
one of the causes of this global change is with no doubt the urbanization of society as we already said and now this is radically transformed the relationship with the territory so if the global city scale emerge as a new form of complexity in terms of food supply the more the city cut themselves off from the countryside the more they become fragile ecosystem nowadays using this classic approach of creating so to say new green areas uh, or big urban parks reveal its limitation i don't know is the situation in, in, in UK or, or in Cyprus currently, but so to say in Italy, but also in Germany, uh, more and more to the municipality aspect, uh, there is a big demand of public fundings to how to manage and to sustain the cost, the public cost of uh, uh, public parks. So in order to shrink, for instance, <clears throat> the New York food shed and providing a, a better governance, this research led by Urban Design Lab of Columbia University um, shown an interesting exploration of how can urban agriculture potential uh, be explored in, in dense metropolit met metropolitan contexts, uh, such for instance in Queens district or in Brooklyn district. The main idea is, is to figure out how significant the productive potential even in an urban landscape, enhancing the same time interaction of social forces with, uh, let's say, a, a growing uh, bottom-up movement of practitioners. And on the other hand, new strategical vision for the cities. There are more, for instance, 1,500 community gardens and more than 50 urban farms in uh, New York metro region, which organize weekly markets without counting the scattered space dedicated to individual production. And overall, this um, are 3,500 hectares, equivalent almost to 10 times the area of Central Park. Strategy two, the paradigm of recycle, so to say. So um, probably everybody know about this big debate also from the German pavilion as been 2012 uh, based on the idea of Latouche theory of epidemic growth no? that represent a sort of realistic hypothesis of urban communities struggling to survive in a socio-economic and environmental stress juncture. Reduction, reuse, recycled uh, as claimed also by Professor Moserici in his book, New Paradigms, seems to be the only sustainable strategy capable of expressing innovation at the moment, generating consensus and producing beauty in the post-metropolitan context. Uh, but today, most of the citizens ignore that agriculture or the food production can take place within consolidated urban tissue, even in this residual spots. If recycling being, means bringing back things into circulation, giving new value and new thinking to waste, then the topic of reuse may also um, refer to the construction of new life cycle for abandoned landscape, to try to think about how to propose uh, new spots and new values and new function within the city, to rethink ecological potential in urban leftovers, so to say. If this is the case, for instance, that I personally studied uh, in, um, in Cuba, in Havana, urban agriculture is not an utopia there, it's a reality. And with the fall of the Soviet Union, became a sort of pervasive tactic for urban resilience. The revaluation of the small-scale cooperative model promoted from the beginning of the 90s in Havana <clears throat> has allowed the transition to an agroecological urban production in a way that saved the, <clears throat> the island from the isolation imposed during the US embargo. In 2019, the only metropolitan area of Havana, more than 50,000 hectares of abandoned land have converted to agricultural uses and livestock farming production. 
And with the support of the Ministry of Agriculture, um, the Grupo Nacional de Agricultura Urbana coordinates various local initiatives and adaptation plan to reorganize the small scale agricultural activities uh, through the diffusion of a basic production unit, uh, what they call it UBPC. Uh, each urban area has been evaluated with indicators of production, which vary between 6 to 28 kilos um, for cubic meter every year. The strategy three uh, is related to this idea of co-design uh, practices. I would rename also urban guerrilla, no? Emerging spontaneous design practices, which are based on sharing assets and bottom-up processes, developing a common creative intelligence, spreading collective desires into the activism uh, dimension. And this growing need for nature and the value that people give to the open space not only concern the extra-urban uh, realm, so to say. Uh, several activist groups across whole Europe, such as Land is Our or Guerrilla Gardening, design intervention, uh, very interesting interventions. And here you can see some examples from Coloco, which is, um, a, so to say, the, the, a part of uh, um, the study of um, um, La, um, Michel de Vigne, a group and um, and design uh, do-it-yourself approaches for a quick response to, to counter-react uh, the poor living qualities of this uh, social housing district uh, and most of the peri-urban context. Or other example that you can see here in, in London from Junior Street Urban Orchard or the Princessin Garden in Berlin or the uh, recent uh, examples of uh, Detroit earthworks trying to re-establish, uh, re the, the productive use of the city in this, um, so to say, big drawscape. This strategy from uh, episodic interventions uh, can be expanded and implemented on a bigger scale, contributing to redesign the metropolitan landscape. And this is a uh, an example made by Studio Landraum from Professor Schroeder in 2010 in Munich as a potential to show the transformation logic in Munich in metropolitan area with Agropolis Munich. If peri-urban agricultural practices are constantly under threat of being absorbed by land consumption, here, in this proposal from uh, Freyham Social District, uh, Studio Landraum considered the existing of agricultural matrix as a key element to prefigure the future cycles, rotation of cultures, and even transformation to an urban district. As um, this proposal, you can see uh, the development of a new housing volumes combined with program of cultivation with organic methods and uh, terrace gardens, community garden, rooftop agriculture distributed with uh, a new infrastructure, what they call it Virtualient Farm, under the central marketplace of Munich to bring the, um, let's say, proximity agriculture production back to the uh, historical city center of, of Munich. The fourth strategy I would like to propose you is about this uh, land links, you know, and also sensing this new informational condition of the contemporary city that it's not built only on traditional formal criteria, but needs also to be dynamically uh, redefined by multiple pattern and, and forces, integrating uh, information which are topographic, biological, economic, cultural, but also uh, shown by this um, datascapes. So the simultaneous mapping 
and what we can learn from, uh, let's say, shared knowledge practices. The emphasis on sustainable design through programs of, uh, uh, for instance, environmental awareness, uh, energy saving solution, and uh, I would say topic connected to ecology, but also um, sustainable design, uh, tends to transform our traditional building typologies involving both housing and neighborhood facilities, such as schools, sports centers, shopping malls, which are not anymore monofunctional. And this is the basic idea of the concept of eco-district, for instance. And the collective desires uh, of uh, this rural or suburban region replace the green spaces or the public parks as the only space in which we can have uh, uh, urban amenities, no? And in which everybody can have free interaction with nature as a place for walk, for leisure, for relax. And so it outlines a new concept of agricultural parks, which goes over the traditional vision of protected or productive zone, no? aiming to redeveloping the peri-urban context uh, as proposed here by Professor Gauza in the suburban area of uh, by the Lobergat, close to um, Barcelona International Airport. There is this uh, very huge extensive uh, river park that can be rethought in a productive potential.